And when you see like these mangoes in the summertime, like I don't know where Europe gets their mangoes, but this is probably one of the best features of Europe. Like they have these mangoes that are just like this. Well, they're organic too. Oh, they're just they're just incredible. Well, they still have real tomatoes. Like you have to search for real tomatoes here. Like if you want an heirloom tomato, that's an actual tomato. The you know, tomatoes that we have are just these freaks. You know, I um, have you ever worn um, glucose monitor? Glucose monitor? No, haven't. I um, I wore one for ninety days, and my wife, when she was younger, well, she runs a pharma company, so she has a. You know, that's really interesting that he said we don't have real tomatoes in America because um, tomatoes are actually one of the most important vegetables. Actually, it's a fruit, technically. But um, it's interesting, that segue right there, because tomatoes balance your blood sugar. And, um, yeah, they used to call them, they used to call those golden apples in Rome. Fun fact. Clivity for science, obviously. And she's she, she thinks about a lot of this stuff scientifically, but she also broke her back when she was 11. So she's very sensitive to inflammation. So she's hacked a lot of food so that she can minimize inflammation. I wore this thing and I was totally blown away. The things that I thought were healthy for me, my body was like, this is radioactive. Like what stuff? So like the way that I ate rice or quinoa, I would have like a small amount of rice or I would have brown rice or I'd have black rice or I'd have quinoa because I was like, oh, it's more protein. It didn't really matter. It had the same, my body reacted with this massive sugar spike. The minute I cooked it off, put it in the fridge, waited 24 hours and ate it the next day, no glycemic load whatsoever. Same with potatoes. Potatoes. Yeah. I found that pasta, if I made it more... Now, interestingly enough, rice, quinoa, and potatoes, those are three things that people typically eat with stew. And what is the base of stew? Tomatoes. That's why tomatoes are so important. More al dente than what I was used to, no glycemic load. And... Like the problem that's frustrating. More al dente, meaning less cooked. Less cooked. Um, has a totally different reaction in my body than if I make it soft and smushy. Huh. So I've trained my body to have like really, you know, al dente pasta. And I see that the glycemic load is much lower. I think the, just the point is like like the food supply in the United States I think it's the most precarious it's ever been. It's brutally hard to figure this out. I mean, how, is everybody supposed to get a glucose monitor and then figure out what little things, you know, trigger insulin spikes? Well, that's not possible. And then even if you do find out, are you, how do you get it in a cheap, affordable way? And I mean, no wonder, like, everybody's, you know, really struggling with this. Have you ever worn a glucose monitor when you were in Italy? No, I wore it here. I'd like to know because there's a difference that the well, way I, my body I can tell responds. you how my body feels. If if I take a picture, I think, like I mean, I try to work I think, out. I think the United States has the biggest population, like the biggest concentration of dishonest people in like the history of humanity. And I take pretty detailed, like what's my BMI, what's my muscle mass, what's my fat percentage, and I always take those readings right before I go. And when I look afterwards, and I don't do anything when I'm there, I'm you know I swim in the in the sea when I can, like when I'm on vacation or whatever. I walk a lot, but nothing else, no weights, no nothing. Um, my muscle mass stays the same. My fat percentage goes down. Um, I look healthier, and I feel really great. And all I do is I just eat what's in front of me. I don't think about quantities, whatever. But when I'm back in the United States, so I get to be there, call it six weeks a year, right? But when I'm back in the United States, I have to go back on lockdown. Because like a lot of people, you know, I had this thing. Like if you look at a picture of me in Sri Lanka, I look like old Dave Chappelle. (laughs) I I was like this. I was just a total stick figure. Within one year of being in North America, in this case in Canada, when you look at the school pictures, I was fat. Couldn't and it's explain just the it difference to. in the food system. 
And my parents were making the same things because they wanted to have that comfort of what they were used to. Mm. So I don't know if it was the food supply or not, but, you it know. It has to be. It has to be. It has to be. And Everybody then, says the same thing. And then my whole family has struggled. Everybody says the same thing. People have been saying what this guy is saying for like the past 10 years. No one's ever going to do anything about it. Um, and it's also not as bad as he's saying. Like, you can... You can get a pretty good diet. Go on Reddit, find like a pretty good diet. Like it's not it's not impossible with it. You know? Mm. So I, I think that there's something and then when I go now to Italy as a different reference example, it's like uh, it's the best shape of my life. Yeah, it's and you I feel do less. completely different. Even when you eat things like pizza over there, Ugh. you don't feel like you ate a brick. If I, I've eaten pizza here and I love it, but when I'm over, I'm like, oh, what did you do? What did you do? Like you ate a brick. But over there, <laughs> it's just food. It, it tastes great. The pasta doesn't bother you. Nothing bothers you. It's just whatever they're doing. And it's there's many things. Just one of them, they're not using enriched flour. And another thing is they have heirloom flour, so it hasn't been maximized to, for the, the most amount of gluten. I'm curious to see what Bobby does if Trump wins in this yeah. whole make America healthy again. I don't exactly know what his plans are. Um, yeah. Um, what's possible? Like, how much can you really affect with regulation? How much can you really bring to light? And what, what are we going to learn about our food system? I mean, even Canada, if you could, they, they, one of the things about the hearings that they just had was they were comparing Lucky Charms that they sell in the United States yeah, yeah. that are very brightly colored versus Lucky Charms that they sell in Canada. Completely different looking product because Canada... In Canada, it's illegal to use those dyes right. that we use ubiquitously. Right. And those dyes are terrible for you. We know they're terrible for you. And Canada knows they're terrible for you, which is why they're illegal up there. The food tastes the same. It still sucks. It's still bad for you. It's still covered in sugar. Totally. But at least it doesn't have that fucking poison that just makes it blue totally. or red. And it is, it's impossible like to teach my kids healthy eating habits as a result of this. The food in, in the United States, it's just it's everywhere and it's beating into you that you, this is a cheap way of getting caloric intake. Right. And it is full of just all these stuff you can't pronounce. It's garbage. Yeah, it's it's all garbage. And it's so it's so common. And then if you're in a what would they would call a food desert, if you're in a place that only has fast food, like my god, like your odds of being metabolically healthy if you're poor and you're living in a place that's a food desert. It's you, impossible. It's fucked. It's impossible. You're fucked. It's too hard. And it's also very expensive, which is even crazier. It's so expensive to eat well and to eat, like, clean and make sure that you don't have any additives and garbage in your food. Do you remember um, in, like, the 90s and 2000s where what we were told was fat was bad? Yeah. And, like, you would see sugar-free, and, and I would just buy it. Oh, yeah. Sugar-free is great. I was like, sugar-free, I'm doing the healthy thing here. Yeah. This is great. Margarine. Margarine, or then I would see fat free, and I'd be like, "Oh, I'll do that." Yeah, and it turned out all this stuff was just well. It's nasty. not even. It's such a small amount of people that affected that. That's what's so terrifying. It was a small amount of people who bribed these scientists to falsify data, so that they could blame all these coronary heart or, or, uh, artery diseases and heart diseases on saturated fat when it was really sugar that was causing all these problems. And we had a very dysfunctional understanding of health for the longest time. The food pyramid was all fucked up. The bottom of the food pyramid was all bread and carbs. You know, it's, ter it's, it's, <laughs> it's so terrible. nuts. And it just made a bunch of, like, really sloppy humans. And you could see it in the beaches, the photos from the 1960s versus looking have at you, people in the 2000s. Have you had Casey and Callie Means on? Uh, they're coming on. Yeah. They're coming on. Yeah. Uh, they have an incredible story. Should I say it or we can just... Sure, yeah. They, they, they have this incredible story that they tell about what happened and what they say is in the 80s when you had these mergers, one of the mega mergers that happened was um, tobacco company with food company. There mm -hmm. was two of them. And a lot of the scientists started to focus some of their energy on taking that skill, I'll just put that in quotes, of making something very addictive and transposing it to food. Right? It's like, okay, if I'm at RJR and I'm used to making cigarettes, how do I think about structurally building up something that wants you to eat more, but now instead of smoking, instead of a cigarette, it's a Twinkie or whatever. And a I heard about that because I did a, I did a, um, a video on 
seven up and why sprite is more popular than seven up and one of the reasons why seven up failed was because they were bought by a tobacco company and then the tobacco company like didn't market it properly a lot of the food science that we have in america is built on the back of a bunch of these mega mergers where you had these scientists go and build super quote unquote addictive food yeah you know and that was a failure of the I mean, obviously, it was a failure of the capital markets, but it was a failure of public health. I think a really understated point here is the fact that when people start looking like, all right, who do we blame for this? Who do we blame for this? It's always companies. But the reality of the situation is in capitalism, companies are allowed, like anyone can form a company. Any company can do anything they want. But then there's supposed to be a regulatory group like there's supposed to be people like the FDA like the FDA is really the the problem here don't start pointing fingers at a tobacco company this is the FDA's fault well it's it's a failure of our regulatory process it's it's a failure of our exposing the public to this and making sure that whatever this is is labeled the same way cigarettes are because if you want to buy cigarettes, you can buy them today, but it's going to have a big warning that tells you this can kill you. Totally. And arguably, sugar is probably as difficult to kick as nicotine is. And there's a lot of other problems. I, um, I smoked when I was younger. I found it much easier to stop smoking than it was for me to uh, cut out sugar. Okay, I have to disagree with this also. So what, what the, the, this is how you cut out sugar. Ready? I'm about to tell you how to cut out sugar. All you have to do is get it from natural sources. Um, you have to eat natural fruit. If you eat natural fruit, if you go on a fruit fast, your body's going to get used to eating natural sugar. And then you're going to start craving that. The thing is, people don't eat enough fruit, and then they they crave like all the sucrose, high fructose corn, corn, and all this nonsense. You have to get used, get your body used to eating natural fruit, and then it'll only crave that. And then, um, when you eat natural fruit, the fiber in the fruit helps process the sugar. Um, yeah, it it really just comes down to, um, the ability as a collective for us to see where the problem is actually taking place, where the bottleneck of the issue actually is. Um, and it's the FDA. Like I'll just save the, I'll save that whole conversation. It's the FDA. Um, they're making certain things. Okay. They're letting certain people cut corners. Uh, there should not be a McDonald's on every street corner. Um, there just shouldn't be that. If you cared about your country, um, you wouldn't allow that. The people who are in the FDA, who are responsible uh, t- for making that decision, um, are not credible people. They're just not good humans. And for that reason, um, they can be bought out. And that's what's happening. I will also say it's a lot harder to control healthy people than it is to control unhealthy people. So, um, you know, you have to factor that into the equation, um, trying to keep a status quo, trying to keep, you know, trying to keep the Romans in order, um, that plays a part in this. Before I even started this video, I knew that these two men were going to get together and talk about an issue with absolutely no solutions. You know, I knew they're going to end this. We got We got to We got to start doing this. We got to start there. I knew they were not going to say a single solution. Um, shout out to Joe, though, because that food stamp idea he had was really that's really a great idea to, like, make only healthy foods eligible for food stamps. That is a great idea. And that would solve the problem instantly. One of the reasons I think it's so hard for people to cut out soda in particular is because uh, that caffeination, that carbonation, um, it helps clear your throat. So if you like eat something and it's like stuck in your throat and all that, like if you drink like a soda, it like clears all of that out. 
and you get a good burp in and then everything's just in your stomach now. Um, I think that's one of the main reasons. But you can buy a soda machine off of Amazon for like a hundred dollars and you can make your own soda that's ten times healthier and tastes the exact same. And um, you could also just do what my stepmom does and put lemon in your water. You know, um, people just don't not everyone has a Ph.D. in nutrition to know that. Um, and I don't either. I just I've been studying nutrition ever since I went vegan in college. I mean, it's like I said, um, all you have to really do is get rid of processed sugar and reintroduce natural sugar to your body from fruits. It's not easy, right? It takes a while, but you will notice a difference in how you feel and how you look if you do that one thing. All right, that's the end of the video. Thank you for watching. Leave a comment. Let me know your thoughts. Like and sub. I'm out.